Dream of Italy is made possible by... Monograms. All-in-one vacation packages that take care of everything. Because we believe travelers should spend their time enjoying the sights, feeling like a local, feeling completely at ease. Monograms. The Perillo Tours Foundation. For 73 years, we've been bringing travelers to Italy. It's where our heart is. First class escorted tours and custom vacations. Italy, the dream destination. PerilloTours.com, 1-800-431-1515. The main point helps guide business owners from the road they've been traveling to the dreams they have for the next. La Dolce Via Travel. We make Italy yours. La Dolce Via Travel dot com. Weekend in Italy dot com. It's all about family. Italy Ancestry dot com. My Italian family. Emilia Romagna. And also made possible by. I'm Kathy McKay. In this series, we'll meet the authentic characters, uncover the hidden treasures, and discover what makes Italy the most fascinating country in the world. Join me as we dream of Italy. How does one even begin to describe Venice? There is simply no other place on Earth anything like it. Venice, filled with ancient canals and opulent palaces, has always enticed and enchanted visitors. For more than a thousand years, beginning in the 8th century, the most serene republic of Venice, La Serenissima, dominated as a maritime power and center of trade. Her merchants and bankers gave rise to capitalism. Her culture produced the painter Titian and the composer Vivaldi. Her sea prowess gave birth to explorer Marco Polo. Where sailors from around the world once congregated, now there are tourists. It is as if Venice is always straddling time. And one symbol has remained constant for centuries. I'm fulfilling my lifelong dream to learn how to row a gondola. And my teacher today is Franco. Hi. Franco, thank you so much it's for this opportunity. It's a very rare thing, right, to learn. Because yeah. usually it's just Venetian. Yeah, but you got a pretty good balance, I can yeah, tell. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm eighth generation gondolier. Eighth generation. And are most gondoliers, is it in their family? Yeah, well, you can do it uh, even if you're not uh, from generation. Everybody can do it. So show me how does the actual rowing with the wrists right. and... Rowing, you have to, it's a wrist movement, but it's a whole movement, okay? It's a, uh, you have to use not only your, your arms, but also your whole body. It's like making love. Ah, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> you knew that. I knew it. I, I've right. been to Italy so, too many times. Right. <laughs> you're learning in one minute what <laughs> takes two years, so you're, you're congratulations. been in Venice since the beginning of the Republic? Yeah. Since the beginning? Yeah, yeah. Gondola have a 700 years of history and it had an evolution. And what were they used for? Well, transportation of different materials and then secondary, we use this gondola to take uh, the noble families around the town. And how many gondolas are there now in Venice? 450. Wow. Yeah. I'm amazed how quiet it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's Sunday. Right. So that might be the best day to take a gondola ride. Yeah, that would definitely be the best day. The interesting thing is comes comes up here. Okay. Because on the turn we got a scream. We got a scream? Yeah. Why? Because we don't want to collide with another boat. Ah, so, so we're how gonna do go we like do this. it? Okay, I'll do it, then you do it. Okay. Oi! Oi! Right. Then nobody answer, then you can go. 
Right, see, it make a turn. We made a turn. Okay. Can you believe it from zero? I can't believe it. We're moving it. at 33 I feet. I can't bolts. believe it. I might have to become a gondolier. You have to be gentle. Like treating a beautiful lady, you have to be gentle, right? <laughs> You're lucky to drive because normally we don't teach people how to I drive. I know. This thing. I know. I know. It's Thank lots of you. Skill. Thank you. This is really a dream. There's hundreds of bridges in Venice. Right. Do you ever hit your head? Uh, time to time. <laughs> Maybe find distraction or think about something else. Uh, like women? Uh, it can be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost everything is like a woman for exactly, you. Exactly, exactly. I, I think you're thinking about women too much. Well, sometimes. You maybe. have to think about something <laughs> when you're rowing, right? right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, Venice uh, surprised me every day. Every day after it does? 27 years I do this job, still watch up and I see new things. So what surprises you now? Well, no, what surprised me is that the beauty of this place, the it, atmosphere is absolutely. so relaxing. Yes. As I'm in love with my town. Water is the very foundation of Venice. I'm with Luca Zaghia, a coastal oceanographer. He studies how sea levels and currents affect the lagoon and the buildings of Venice. Luca is taking me to the Cadoro, one of the oldest palaces in the city. Today, there are very serious concerns about rising waters and crumbling buildings. Here there is one and a half thousand, more or less, uh, years of history of coexisting with water. Everybody knows Venice is sinking and also sea level rise. The combination of these two things gives Venice a much higher frequency of floods. Although it is made up of 118 islands, Venice was primarily constructed on platforms built directly into the lagoon, a defense against mainland invaders. Water is a new invader because this is what we have to deal every day. The continuous rising of tidal levels will affect monuments. So Venetians have always been fighting to survive, and now it's the water that they're fighting. Yeah, exactly. That's the next enemy. But the water is what gives them life. It's almost poetic. Yes. <laughs> We're here because I want to take you inside and explore the problems of Venice from within. Let's go. Let's go. When the Cadoro was built in the 15th century, these steps were the main entrance to the palace. And the main facade of the building is always facing the canal because this is the entrance of friends for parties. This is the place where they did business. So Luca, these are the steps. And in the past, they were out of the water. There have always been tidal surges and even terrible floods that rose through the first floor. Salt is everywhere. You have it here, you have it over there. That's all white. That's so much salt. Wow. Capillarity can, can make the seawater be absorbed up to the level of the second floor. They're falling apart. Yeah. And is this because of the, the water? Because of the crystallization of sea salt into the bricks. This is actually all salt. You can try it if you want to taste it. Taste it's, it? It's really sea salt. OK. So, yeah, it looks like salt to me. That's enough. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. tastes like what you'd have on your table. And it's happening faster than it normally would. Now we just try to react and compensate. It's obvious as you travel the canals that Venice relies on the water for everything. Traditionally, the tide flushes the canals of the city twice a day. That was the most amazing way of getting rid of sewage. Yeah. Venice was cleaner just by being here. And that's why it's so important to maintain the flushing of the lagoon by the tide. Luca is taking me to the Arsenale, the historic shipyard, to see the giant water gates of the $7 billion Mosaic project, Venice's best chance for survival. These gates will moderate the storm surges while still allowing the tides to flush the lagoon. Venice must maintain this delicate ecological balance if it is to have any future. 
So those barriers yes. are put into yes, the water. Yes, they on this side, on the right side, they have hinges, which are attached to the concrete structure which is under the seafloor, uh -huh. and they will be pneumatically raised, stopping the flood from invading Venice. It's a massive, massive project. So, Luca, what does this all mean when you sum it all up? Venice always fight it against the water and always found a solution. On the Grand Canal, steps away from the famous Rialto Bridge is the Rialto Market, which has been feeding Venetians since the 11th century. Chef Ricardo Volpe joins me to buy the ingredients for a favorite Venetian dish. Più famoso. In Venice. It's, it's in, the in, most in, famous in, market in, in Venice. In, 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 in El Mundo. El Mundo, and in the world. <laughs> And also. this is where you buy, comprare, si. all of your fish, fish, eels, scampi, scampi, tuna, tuna, fresh tuna, turbo fish, clams. This is uh, from Laguna. This is right from the si, lagoon. Si. And what we came here to buy? And, uh, and uh, languida. Si. <laughs> they look like snakes. Oh, e ancora vivo. Yeah, chiaro, è viva, no? Super fresh. Ricardo really knows his stuff. Thank you. So let's go, cook <laughs> yeah. up some meal. <laughs> this is as fresh as it gets. Ah! <laughs> El Coro Vivo! Claro, El eh, Moica, piatto tipico del de la... <laughs> Allora, dunque pre presentiamo questa anguilla fritta e la moica fritta, va bene? So we're going to fry Fried. This. Bravo. Cominciamo? Cominciare. Ok, l'anguilla. È morto? Ah, questa è morta, sì, adesso. Va bene, ok. Bravo. Della farina. <laughs> I'm not crazy about crab. Ricardo's recipe is simple. Dip the eel and crab in egg. Okay. Roll them in flour. <laughs> Good job. Assunta una cuoca. Fry them for five minutes and plate it up. I'm now a crab and eel chef. So it's white polenta. Ora prendo l'anguilla. Basil, I like it. Yeah. E pronto, the colors of the Italian flag. <laughs> Bravo. So I've never had eel, but when in Venice, you do as the locals do. It's for you. Grazie. Mmm. <laughs> Actually, it's very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. It's very it's soft. It what melts is... in your mouth. Okay. Viva Venezia, viva l'anguilla, allora, no? Viva Venezia, viva l'anguilla. <laughs> Venice is surrounded by water, but the summer heat can call for something to cool you down. Here's how you make the spritz. Start with ice in a tall glass. Add two parts Aperol, the sweetest of the bitter liqueurs. Add three parts Prosecco, a sparkling white wine, and just a splash of soda, a quick spin, and a slice of orange. The Spritz, the classic Venetian cocktail. Giovanni, where are we going? We're going to see a Venice by the point of view of Venetians. I've never seen Venice from a kayak. No, in fact, it's a, a, quite a we could say there is another way to see flows uh, to the fish. Yes, <laughs> we got to this say. is a real, <laughs> real, authentic experience. And everything happens by water. Yes. Why? Uh, because uh, that everything uh, pain, uh, happened by water. Even the, um, the transport of the goods, the ambulance is by boat. Fire department is by boat. In the policeman is by boat. It's by boat. The kayak could be as like the bicycle. The other boat is like the, the cars. So it's a truly authentic experience. What I love best 
fact is that I'm not just seeing Venice, I'm seeing Venetians. <laughs> yeah. Like you. <laughs> yes. Uh, and the guy no, in the window. There is much more panda all over the world than Venetian. Ah, really? <laughs> They're a rare species. <laughs> One hundred and seventy-seven canals crisscross the city. The Grand Canal is Main Street for everyone who calls Venice home. A lot of buildings in Venice are often inherited. A lot of people that inherit the buildings no longer live in Venice. And therefore, yes. you see a lot of buildings slowly become abandoned and not taken care of. It's easy to think that the buildings that line the Grand Canal are just hotels, palaces, and museums but there are homes here. Venice, despite a dwindling population attracted by ease of life on the mainland, is still a living city with neighborhoods, schools, families, and kids. Our idea was to take care of a building, restore it, and have a family live in it, bring it back to life, and, and also run bed and breakfast. So we have a bed and breakfast here. Our dining room is on the Grand Canal, and that's really lovely. And lots of light, which is something we're really lucky, not having a palazzo right next door to us. It's nice. We've made a neighborhood inside our four walls. His name is Boogie. Boogie. Like Boogie Boogie. Boogie Boogie. Boogie. What kind of dog is he? He's a, an Italian water dog. Perfect for Venice. Yes, perfect for Venice. I always stop wherever I am in Italy or in the world to meet the dogs. Oh, yeah. Boogie. And what do you do here? I'm a photographer. Let me see. They are all photographs of Venice with no people, no gondolas, no nobody. It's Just peaceful Venice. Right, right. Sometimes people come, 50% they look at Boogie, he looks nice, yeah. and that, that's and helped me to my business. And then they come like me, like I saw yeah. Boogie, but and then I see the photo. While I love meeting any dog when I travel, there's one breed I go crazy over. or anything about me, it's that I love wire fox terriers. They are my heart and soul, and I've been waiting to meet one in Venice, and I just found one. Her name is Lizzie. Tell me about Lizzie. She's two and a half years old. So um, is she Italian born? She's Italian born. Mm -hmm. Look at how sharp she is. And in Venice, I don't just meet one wire fox terrier, but two. He looks like my dog. <laughs> I found another. Fox Terrier. He's so cute. <laughs> Given its unique geographic position, Venice flourished as a shipbuilding center and wealthy trading power. First it was salt, then silk and glass, mainly produced on the island of Murano. Glass has always played a pivotal role in Venetian life. The name of my profession in Italian is Impiraressa, which literally means bead stringer. The manufacturing of glass has started almost a thousand years ago. Glass making was so very expensive that only very small objects were made, and for sure the beads were the first little objects to be produced. In order to string them, they would just literally scoop in with these very long needles that were made of steel. At the end of 1800, beginning of 1900, during the colonial expansion, the beads were used literally as money. They were so called, and still now we call them, trade beads. This was a unity of measure, feel how heavy it is. Wow. Half a kilo, a pound. 
a bundle of trade beads in the mid-1800s cost about four or five hundred dollars. That's about ten thousand dollars today. Venetian women would string beads at home as a second income. And the Sweet. little boys and girls would have this sound as a lullaby. Oh. Nani na nana. Even my son. Oh. <laughs> the authentic Venetian glass beads, those that are made now, that each one by each one are manufactured by hand. And look at these uh, with little tiny branches of outside. coral designed on the, on the surface. It's done by hand. It's done by hand. Entire ships used to go around the world full of beads. It was the most desirable item to trade all over the world. So if you're life. shopping for these glass, for mm. glass beads, mm. how do you know if it's real? I always suggest not to buy Venetian glass beads from strangers. You need to ask the locals. <laughs> exactly. Ask the locals. ask the locals and a better chance you have, not better chance you have, of meeting the artisans. It's not just something beautiful to wear, but there's a long history to There these. is a long history, and when you wear a Venetian glass bead, you wear a thousand years of history. So you're steering this day, and I'm I am just, steering this I'm thing. helping to propel it. You're doing great. If you don't row Venice, you don't know Venice. <laughs> Good one. Bravissima. Walk. Good. Twist. Twist big. Walk. walk. Twist. Brilliant. Walk. <laughs> Woohoo! Twist. High five. Walk. So Row Venice mm -hmm. is an organization. We have over 20 female instructors. It's an alternative job opportunity <laughs> for expert female rowers. Watch your oar, watch your oar. So I pull it in. Brava, brava. There's nothing more Venetian than the Volga. This is the most Venetian thing you can do, really, still. This, this, is, this style of rowing has been around in the Venetian Lagoon and the city for over a 1,000 years. Women rowed. The uh, Maria Boscola, who's uh, got a portrait in the Correre, she rowed for like 50 years and won. Okay, Kathy, if you do really well, then we're gonna have some food and drink after this. Chiquetti and really? a little Prosecco, so is that the what do you purpose think? Of this trip, we have a goal in mind. <laughs> That's your motivation. So this, uh, a gondola back in the day was like a limousine. A limousine, a chauffeur, a carriage, and a driver. Yeah, Here you had a good gondola and some gondoliers to drive you around. Two, actually, in the day. This boat did everything else. It's called a Batella Cote di Gambero. Hey! Oye! Oh, you have a good one. <laughs> you have a strong oye. Well, if I don't yell, there's a boat. Never fails. I think I'm getting the hang of it. You totally are. So this is probably the closest to walking on water you'll ever get. <laughs> oh, to la testa. Brava. Where do you see the, the chiquetti that got waiting for us here? Chiquetti. <laughs> These are sort of like the modern day chiquetti that you see around Venice. We have uh, ricotta cheese, we have uh, salmon, we have uh, taleggio cheese. Mmm. It's a Venetian habit. You go inside, get one apiece, get a little glass of wine, chat for three minutes, and off you go. Fast right? food. <laughs> Venetian fast food, exactly. So, but I think since we have a nice selection, we deserve it. And plus, you work so hard. We were rowing, <laughs> so it's OK to sit. Take exactly. a rest and take in the city. Venetian Eve. Oh, uh, thank you for a really, truly unique Venetian experience. Thank you, Kathy. Cheers to the Voga. Cheers. Cheers. Venice. You can visit this city again and again and never feel like you can completely know her. Like a lover who's always slightly out of reach and she wouldn't have it any other way.
Dream of Italy is made possible by... Monograms. All-in-one vacation packages that take care of everything. Because we believe travelers should spend their time enjoying the sights. Feeling like a local. Feeling completely at ease. Monograms. The Perillo Tours Foundation. For 73 years, we've been bringing travelers to Italy. It's where our heart is. First class escorted tours and custom vacations. Italy, the dream destination. PerilloTours.com, 1-800-431-1515. The main point helps guide business owners from the road they've been traveling to the dreams they have for the next. La Dolce Via Travel. We make Italy yours. La Dolce Via Travel dot com. Weekend in Italy dot com. It's all about family. Italy Ancestry dot com. My Italian family. Emilia Romagna. And also made possible by. For more about visiting Italy, additional videos, and a companion travel guide, please visit dreamofitaly.com.